everyone. Uh, tonight I'd like to introduce you to DIY bio, synthetic biology in a little bit, and my own kind of foray into this that I'm calling indie biotech and what I'm doing to help people make life at home uh, in the biotech sense. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going faster than I expected. So DIY bio is a take on the, uh, the existing sort of naturalism that's already popular among people like in their homes, but it's kind of a more modern take, whereas the old one was mostly passive and observational, like you know, naturalism, watching birds, it's, it's brilliant, but there was these things missing. Uh, the take on uh, mic advanced microbiology, uh, genetics, and biotechnology, where you're actively inter interacting with living things, perhaps on a genetic level, or just perhaps just observe their behavior, learn more about them by doing. And that's what I'd like to encourage here. So why, why is DOI Bio taking off now? It's not just me. DOI Bio has been spurred strongly by the internet, where you have decades of scientific research available to you at the click of a button. You have collaborators, communities to ask, you have suppliers, and you have rapid prototyping, like that lovely MakerBot down at the back of the room. Uh, so as an example of this, I brought up uh, OpenPCR, which is a project for some guys in San Francisco. Uh, and it's, the PCR reaction is critical to biotechnology. It allows you to copy and paste DNA, but the equipment costs up to three to $5,000 or euro in this case. All it does, uh, to put it simply, is it, it quickly and accurately changes the temperature of a reaction at precise intervals between three different temperatures. Um, and for that, you pay more than most of us can afford to spend on a hobby. Um, but OpenPCR took that concept uh, with some rapid prototyping and $12,000 in community funding through kickstarter.com and managed to make a piece of equipment uh, that I'm holding in my hands here that costs only $512 and does exactly the same with more future potential because it's uh, open source. So other open source gadgets include my own uh, effort, the Dremel Fuge, which uses a, a power tool to spin samples exceptionally fast. Uh, the Pearl Biotech Open Gel Box, which again, really expensive in the mainstream, cheap here, and the pocketable Lava Amp Thermocycler designed for bush work. So what do DIY bio bio biologists do? Uh, so I mean, here's a, an experiment that a few people have done here where you uh, culture bioluminescent bacteria from seafood. They glow in the dark passively all the time. You can also extract your own DNA and learn more about your own genetics, bypass unethical gene patents. Um, and you know, some of these things can be as harmless as taste, whether you can taste Brussels sprouts or whether you're susceptible to breast cancer. And this raises an ethical and a legal kind of issue, but I think that this needs to be in people's hands so they can make the decisions. Um, people have also organized into crowdsourced and distributed scientific studies which have recently been published in Nature. In this case, um, the gene MTHFR and its relationship to people's ability to metabolize different versions of vitamin B9. Um, so where do people do it? There's community ha labs and community biohacker spaces popping up all around the world now, uh, particularly Genspace and Biocurious in America, and uh, the London Hackerspace, Temp Lab in Paris, Biologic Garden in Europe, and elsewhere, everyone's meeting up to do this just in local bars. So synthetic biology, it's no, uh, it's, it's, it's no coincidence that DIY bio is taking off at the same time as this revolution in genetic engineering, which is promising to m create forms of life that will be able to tackle a lot of the problems which really scourge our society today, such as global warming, whether we can create sustainable fuels using waste materials that we currently throw away. Um, and synthetic biology, is, it's, it's really kind of a fancy term for an old thing, but the ability to synthesize DNA on demand uh, has really changed the field because you used to have to take wild DNA, change it around, fiddle with it, try to you know, hack it into what you need, the box you needed to fit in. Whereas with synthetic biology, you can just order it over the internet. Now, industry love it for their big, you know, expensive things, but little people want to use this for human and humanitarian things, like creating antibiotics on site in Africa so that people will actually be able to treat their own diseases. Uh, melamine sensing yogurt was a concept put forward by someone in Europe, and uh, you know, that would help people in China make sure that baby formula is safe. So what's the unmet need here that stops I individuals from doing this? Mostly the middle thing here. The DNA constructs that people in the lab currently use to, uh, to get work done in synthetic biology aren't appropriate for individuals. There are things like antibiotic resistance that you don't want amateurs to be fiddling around with. Uh, there's you know, the, the, the issue of how easy it is to get the DNA in there, how stable it's going to be. And that's something that um, you know, I'm kind of hoping to personally help with in the incoming months with a company I'm starting up called Indie Biotech, which aims to make a plasmid which will make most of the work of creating GMOs as simple, as safe, and as straightforward as possible, and will encourage people to use a, 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 you know, a, better, a better bacterium than E. coli, Bacillus subtilis, eaten by millions worldwide. So hopefully I'll be able to share a fermenting revolution in biology with everyone in Ireland in the coming months. So there you go.